I have something very special planned. How's that arrest warrant? It's already in motion. It's time for Madam to feel the pain. If you touch a hair on my father's head, I will come after you with a vengeance that you didn't even know was possible. I'm gonna pay for this. There's a bunch of cops outside surrounding the building. I'm always one step ahead of you. Glad to die. All the Queen's men. What is up, y'all? What is up? It is your girl, EJ, the TV junkie, back with another All the Queen's Men recap and review. Now, guys, this review is going to be a little bit different because I am going to give you my full review, but I also am going to throw in some of my live reactions as I am watching the show for the very first time. Now, if you are interested in seeing the full video for my live reaction, then you definitely got to be a part of the membership. Make sure you join the membership. You'll get my full live reaction videos for All the Queen's Men under that second tier. Now y'all, let's go ahead and get into All the Queen's Men Season 4 Episode 1, and you already know this episode starts right where the last one left off. And that is with Madam finding out that her father has been taken again, but this time, she doesn't quite know who took her father. She believes it to be the concierge, and we're gonna soon find out that it wasn't really the concierge, that it was indeed Lotus's father, Santiago. Now, of course, Madam and the concierge are always gonna do this back and forth game. Concierge loves to give Madam the business. He loves playing this cat and mouse game with her, but this time he tells her that it wasn't him that actually did it, but that he did tell her that there would be consequences. So meanwhile, we got Big D, Baby D, Little D, all of the D's, um, he and Amp were just getting into that fight on the stage. So we kind of have the aftermath of this where they bring them off the stage and then Dime is going off on Amp. And I'm like, but didn't Big D actually do something as well? And then Big D is like, but you threw the first punch. But dude, you bumped into him. Now y'all know I ain't really got that much love for Amp right now, but I am trying to find my way back to liking this character. But I cannot stand old Snitch D. Like, Dude, you are an op. No matter how you want to paint it, you are still an op regardless. Yes, you said it was only this one. No, don't nobody believe that. Like, no. And the fact that Dom is out here trying to hype you up and out here trying to go in on Amp, but she don't want to go in on you. Like, that just irritates me even more. I can't even stand Dom right now. Blue tell them they need to get their ish together point blank and period and she talks about amp and his sobriety and the fact that he has been in aa and she's like listen you don't want to mess all that up over this and then of course big d has to say something like you always got something to say i do not understand why he is still here like seriously he should have been gone but anyway y'all you don't come so far with your aa don't allow some bullshit to be wasted on it you're right i know i am now go out there and make some money. Don't you think you ought to say sorry? He just tried to walk away. Let him go. So meanwhile, we get back to Madam's father. We finally get a chance to see the man who actually has him, and it is Santiago. This is Lotus's father. Now, of course, Lotus's father is all upset about the fact that, you know, uh, that Madam took out his daughter. Uh, he's having a conversation with the concierge, and the concierge is just telling him, like, look, you are messing up my legitimate businesses. All of this stuff has got to stop. Like, we need to be done with this. But of course the father is like, nope, that is not what is about to happen. We are not about to be done with this. This is all your fault. You shouldn't have been messing around. It's your concubine. I said a concubine. Wait a minute. Is that what we say right now? You call a madam a concubine? But anyway, we all know that this was a marriage of convenience. This was an arranged marriage. They were not in love. It is not his fault that Lotus went out here catching feelings and doing extra. Like you should have taught your daughter better. And meanwhile, your daughter just should have stayed in her place just because you are her father does not mean that she has the same clout as you, does not mean that she has the same reach or power as you, which we will soon find out you ain't even got as much as we think anyway. Probably was really the concierge was probably the brains of this whole operation. But the concierge is just like over it at this point. He don't want nothing to do with this whole situation. So, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, y'all, y'all know we got to have a little dance break up in here. To me, this dance break wasn't that great, but you know, it was all right. It will do. I feel like we've had some much better dance breaks than this one, but okay. So... So 
let's go ahead and move on to your girl, Detective Davis, because Detective Davis stayed doing the absolute most, y'all. I just wish we could go ahead and get rid of her, but y'all know that she was playing this whole situation this whole time, and turns out D.A. Rod knew all about it. So when, uh, what's his name, Casanova thought that he was really doing something, when he really thought that Detective Davis had turned Detective D.A. Rod was in it the whole time because Detective Davis had come to her with this whole plan about going undercover and nobody else could know about it but her, of course. And she said that she just did what she had to do in order to, you know, make this case. And I'm just like, first of all, y'all, there are a lot of inconsistencies with this whole situation with this case. And y'all know I am a person that will tell you 100 percent that you have to suspend reality when you watch this show because stuff just won't be making sense and you'll just be like what the world and stuff be just outlandish sometimes and that's what I love about this show but at the same time I was so irritated with this whole madam case like how do you think that stealing a t-shirt from doc is going to get madam how do you think that that is going to trace back to madam it's not madam who was in possession of the shirt it's doc who is in possession of the shirt what are you going to try to flip doc that's not going to work but it doesn't feel like that's what she's trying to do it feels like them getting this t-shirt with tina's blood on it all of a sudden just makes this whole thing come together blue was the one that was in there with when tina was on the floor so if blue was there no doc and no madam how does it tie back to madam like just make it make sense for me just for a little while is all i'm asking because y'all know i ride for madam and i just i i feel like detective davis and this weak case that she got is just utterly ridiculous and it don't even make sense at all period just saying whatever it takes to get the bad guys right hmm? right and in the end it's all worth it if justice is served Okay, so you just out here being a thought, 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 because that's what you was doing. So just to get your job done, you was out here sleeping with him. You wanted to sleep with him. Like, it is what it is. But I'm still mad at Doc, because how you even let her get this close? How you even let her in your space, in your energy like that? Like, no, that is not what you're supposed to do. I don't even understand how we thought that this was a great idea and how we actually let our guard down. So anyway, y'all, Madam finally tells Blue what is going on with her father and that he's been taken and she has enlisted El Fuego to try to help her. Now, I feel like this is probably going to be one of those things that's going to come back to bite her because if I'm El Fuego, while I have access to this phone, I'm going to go ahead and try to get any information off of it that I can because y'all know El Fuego is still low-key not trusting madam 100 percent now although i don't agree with it i'm just saying if i was him in his situation that's what i would have done and i feel like that's what he should have done because right now her guards are down and you really could have gotten you know all the stuff off the phone if you were really trying to figure out what was really going on and if you was really trying to be an op i'm just saying that's what i would have done but i ain't no op so i uh you know i don't subscribe but if I was El Fuego, that's what I would have done. Y'all get what I'm saying. Y'all know what I mean. Now, meanwhile, we're going to meet this new character by the name of Smoke, who is going to show up while Tommy is out here trying to get rid of the body of the person who stole the money. And then we're going to uh, see he also has a body. So I'm like, dude, so you bringing a body out here? What's this, like the body spot or something? But we're going to find out that Smoke is an old acquaintance and that he ain't got like no sense at all like he is certified psycho and this is the type of crowd that madam hangs out with she needs certified psychos around just like uh tommy is a psychopath this dude is too they literally gonna bury the bodies together and he's just like look if you uh like i'm looking for work and we find out that this joker done unalived his boss because he was late and his boss wasn't feeling it i said that is psych go <laughs> so anyway y'all that was crazy but he just wants uh tommy to tell madam that if she needs some work done that he's there i feel like smoke is gonna come in handy at some point because we all know that uh madam needs some crazies now meanwhile y'all miss tandy is out here asking babyface to get her a gun and i'm just like what is the purpose of this gun tandy like what are we doing exactly why does babyface need to get you a gun and what are you about to do now y'all know that i wholeheartedly 100 percent believe that tandy pulled that plug on her husband and i forgot i think somebody actually has proof of it i don't know exactly who because i can't remember i didn't re-watch that particular part of it but we 
know that she did it, right? But what does she need a gun for? Like, what is she about to do? And oh my God, I think I just figured out what she about to do with the gun. But that didn't, okay. I know she did not do that, y'all. Okay, so let me just jump to this part right here while it's clicking for me. So there's a part somewhere where D.A. Rods is getting shot at, right? And I believe it was D.A. Rods who probably saw that footage and knows that Tandy is the one who did this. Y'all think it was Tandy that was out there shooting at the D.A.? Because I couldn't catch who it was because I didn't want to rewind it because I was making a reaction video for y'all. And so I didn't want to... Uh, interrupt that video so I didn't have a chance to go back and look but I feel like that's exactly what happened I can't say 100% but you know because right now I'm recording and doing all of this kind of in real time I haven't rewatched the episode you're getting my reaction right after I finished watching it uh, so I guess we shall see Okay, 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 Miss Tandy. But anyway, as I was saying, she's asking Babyface for this gun, talking about she don't want it to be traceable. And I'm like, out of all the people that you're going to ask to go get you a blicky, you're going to ask Babyface to go get you a blicky? Like, come on, Tandy. Like, Babyface ain't good for nothing, nothing at all. But anywho, he actually does go and get a blicky. He asks Midnight for one, and Midnight is like, listen, you didn't get this from me. I'm like, you didn't even ask enough questions for me. Like, you didn't even ask about what you need to go. Like, you didn't just ask. Like, to me, he didn't say, I need the gun to be untraceable, yada, yada, yada. Maybe I am just a person that feels like everything needs to be direct. Maybe I don't feel like it needs to be unsaid because I don't want you to ever come back and say, well, you didn't say. No, nah, I need to make sure that I say the word so you will know exactly what it is that I need. So that way there is just no misunderstanding about it because, you know, I'm just saying. But anywho, that kind of makes sense now, y'all. I just I didn't think about that when I was first watching it. So meanwhile, Santiago finally reaches out to Madam, letting her know that, uh, listen, I'm coming and that your father is going to, you know, be unalived in agony. And then she he does the unthinkable, y'all. He like cuts him and that blood like right in his eye. It looks like I don't know what it what is the deal with people in eyes lately. But anyway, that blood just started spewing out of his eye. Y'all I ain't gonna lie. I laughed. I really did laugh. It was funny the way it came flying out of there. So meanwhile, uh, Amp is out here apologizing to Dime. Amp, stop apologizing to Dime. Let it go, okay? Yes, you did some effed up stuff. She did some effed up stuff to you. Like, at this point, I feel like y'all are even. Like, I feel like you got your lick bag. She got her lick bag. But she's just going to keep it going because we know that either she really feeling Big D or she's still trying to make him jealous. I don't know which one it is, but she just playing a game that she just really needs to stop playing. And then she keeps giving him the energy like after everything you've done to me. But what about you? What you did to me? I could have been gone. I could have been like out of here by my own family, all because you didn't ask the questions that needed to be asked. But do we need to get past that? Absolutely. I think we are beyond that at this point. I think they should just let it go. I'm over it. I need him to stop apologizing and just let that be go because I really don't even like Dom at this point, child. It is what it is. And I definitely don't like Big D, Little D, Dumb D, all the Ds. Y'all already know. It's no fun. Come sit down. Yeah, I'm good. Why does on, Big D Dom. give me stalker vibes? Home, your food will be nice and cold. You might as well come eat it while it's hot. So anyway, meanwhile, D.A. Rod actually gets the uh, results back from the T-shirt. And it turns out that it does have Tina's blood on it. And now Detective Davis talking about she want to go out and celebrate, talking about how she's not scared of Madam. Listen, you should be scared of Madam. You really should be. You think that this badge is going to protect you from her. The fact that you actually tried to go undercover, the fact that anybody actually believed that you had switched that quick just baffles me to be to be fair, there is no world where I ever felt like she was going to be on the up and up. But the fact that you out here talking about you not scared of Madam, yada, 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 ma'am. Madam has somebody violate uh, Casanova in the worst way possible. I think you should be afraid of Madam. She just dealing with something else right now. But when she able to get back and focus on you, it's going to be a problem. So it is what it is. And I cannot wait because I cannot Dan, Detective Davis, y'all. She be doing the most. Now, y'all, I don't even know why Doc decides to call Midnight because every time somebody calls Midnight, he always in the middle of something, always doing the absolute most. He never gives any good advice. Like, why do we keep calling Midnight when his advice sucks? Like, don't worry about it. It'll show up. 
No, it's gone. It is gone. So now Doc actually knows that the T-shirt is gone. Why did you have the T-shirt in your closet? Why did you not get rid of this? Why was this not something that was burned a long time ago? What world do you think it was a good idea to keep the blood, the T-shirt, the bloody T-shirt of a woman that you had to unalive? Like, this has got to be like a uh, criminal 101. Get rid of the evidence. Get rid of anything that can link you to the crime. Like, you don't really want to be a criminal doc. You don't really want to do this. You really ain't about this life. I just don't understand. Stop calling midnight, okay? Let that man do what he do. Oh, Lord have mercy, y'all. Meanwhile, we got baby face that done made it back to his home for the moment, right? Because y'all know how it is. Baby face, all he do is move from house to house, move from couch to couch and do it absolutely every... Oh my God, baby face be irking my nerves. Y'all know I cannot stay in baby face right now. Like baby face... I stopped liking him somewhere around season two and he ain't, I ain't never recovered from it since then. And right now he done brought this girl, the Blicky, and we've already kind of figured out exactly uh, what she needed it for and what she was going to do with it. But I'm just like, really like face is playing the game. Like face is like, I'm going to use who I can use while I can use them. I'm going to do what, what I can do. He could not wait to Jack was out of there so that he could get himself up in there Y'all, this ain't going to end well, but, you know, we shall see. But I feel like we're about to bring Madam into even more mess that she going to have to clean up. All Madam do is clean up behind these ninjas, y'all. That's it, like, every single time. And we all know that she got her own stuff, like, she ha and she has a ton of stuff. But she still has to clean up after these jokers. Now, I'm not even going to waste too much time with this because I did tell y'all that Doc had called Midnight, but I just want to say this real quick. Midnight, why the hell do you got somebody snorting the the, the white stuff off of your thing thing? Why? Why is that? What are we doing? Like, aren't you afraid of getting something inside that thing? Haven't you already had enough issues with that thing? Shouldn't you be careful with that thing? I'm just saying, okay. I'm a now, meanwhile, we got Big D sitting, eating his lunch, dinner, breakfast, whatever it is. It's probably early in the morning at this point. But Dime has come through trying to get some food as well. And then he's like, oh, you should eat it here so it can be hot. I'm so over these two. I'm not even spend a, finna spend another moment talking about it. Moving on. Now, meanwhile, one of the craziest moments of this episode happened. And when I say craziest, I mean in the sense of, Doc, you are stupid. Like when I tell you that you have got to be the dumbest, dumbest, dumbest one, I thought that you were so much smarter than this. I cannot believe you actually fell for this. You actually called Detective Davis, ask her about the quote unquote evidence that if this call is being recorded, you've cooperated where she got the shirt from right now. There is a chain of custody problem. Like don't nobody know where that shirt came from. Don't nobody know how she actually got that shirt. There's no way they can even use that shirt. But because you done called her and you all but admitted that she took the shirt, if that call was recorded, you know, there you go. Like now you can connect that. Oh, I really did get this from here. But then she tells you that she don't want you right now, that she's going after a bigger fish. Like, bruh. Oh, God, this is so crazy. And then you have the nerve to say that what we had, like it didn't mean any. Bruh, no, you. Oh. Calm down, Erica, calm down. No, Doc, no. Um. I know that that thing thing be thinging, but it ain't thinging that much for her to give up her career and her job for it, okay? Uh, especially when she knew that it wasn't real. She was using you, bruh, and you fell right into that, and you actually started to catch feelings for a op. What is wrong with these guys, y'all? What is wrong with them? Now, meanwhile, we got the concierge on the phone talking to somebody. We don't have a clue who's who he's actually talking to, but someone he is in business with, cahoots with, that knows about Madam because he literally tells them, like, look, we just need to go ahead and get get a, a unalive two birds with one stone, right? He's talking about Santiago and he's talking about Madam because Madam wants to get at Santiago. Santiago wants to get at Madam, but they messing with his business. So he want to get rid of both of them, right? So he allows his location to be traced because he knows that Madam is going to come there. Now, how in the world she got from where she at to from Atlanta to Mexico, that doggone quick, because I, I swore they said they was in Mexico. 
I, maybe it was a day jump. Like they need to tell me when these time jumps or something like that, or if the day goes on, because I don't know. But she was in a jet, so maybe she got there real quick. I don't know. I, I don't know how far it is from Atlanta to Medico. It, it could have been an hour on a jet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. So we're not even going, I ain't going to harp on it. I, I'll just notice that she, you know, made it to Medico and she gets there. She unalives the dude that the concierge is trying to unalive. And it's so funny to me because concierge and madam are just alike. Like they are so similar. He just has a little more finesse with his, whereas madam is a little more in your face. That's the only difference. Y'all just alike, seriously. So she unalives the guy and then, you know, his plan kind of falls right into place. And that's how she gets the location for where Santiago is. So yeah, it's a whole hallelujah hot mess. But I was so here for it because once we get there, we get a little more action. We get, you know, the shootout. But why them fools got masks on their face outside in this heat? I do not have a clue because they was outside with actual ski mask on looking crazy. But uh, Madam just comes through and does what she needs to do. And when I say they, I'm talking about the ops had the ski mask on, y'all. At they place, they got their faces covered up. But maybe it was for a reason. I don't know. But Madam is definitely coming up in there real strong, right? And right before the episode ends, uh, we get this one little guy who swears he don't know where Santiago is, but uh, Blue notices that his cues are telling him that, you know, saying where he might actually be. And not only that, y'all, we learned that Tommy speaks Espanol. Before I shoot him. Donde esta Santiago y el hombre? <laughs> no, no, sé. <laughs> Tommy know how to speak goddamn go me Spanish. Wait a minute, wait a minute, y'all. So <laughs> what is it that Tommy does not do? What is okay? I said Tommy can do whatever. Listen, I love Tommy, and Tommy is like a jack of all trades. Tommy is out here uh making cookies, he can bake cookies, he can eat cookies, all he can he can eat cookies, okay? And Tommy is the butler. He fixes the dinner. He runs the bath. He gives the massages. Tommy is the, uh, shoot, he the doggone uh, muscle at the club. He the right hand. He go bury the bodies. Tommy does it all, okay? Like, everybody needs a Tommy in their life. I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say that. You need a Tommy in your life. So anyway, y'all, that is where this episode is with Madam making it to the warehouse where they are holding her father. So anyway, y'all, that is what's up with All the Queen's Men, season four, episode one. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Go ahead and drop your thoughts down below. Meanwhile, guys, we have a lot of things that we're going to be doing around All the Queen's Men this go around. We are going to be having a live after show that is going to be happening tonight. want to give everybody a chance to go ahead and look at the episode, give you a chance to eat your turkey, your dressing, and all that type of stuff. And we'll be on to watch the episode. It's going to be a watch along so you can watch it um you know where you're at and you'll and we'll be giving you our reactions as we're looking at it together of course and then uh make sure that you are in the discord because we always have things going on in the discord sometimes we actually let you in on our watch alongs as we are watching them and you're able to come in and watch it with us so make sure that you're in discord because you won't know unless you're in the discord because we're not saying if we are or are not this go around. So you got to be in the Discord to find out. So anyway, y'all, uh, that and then, of course, live Virtual Club Eden is going to be going down on Sundays, as it always does with myself and Tika Deshaun hosting. And we are going to be bringing our friends along so that we can talk even more of the Queen's Men. Now, guys, I will have my video up for the episode two a little bit later today. As y'all know, it is Thanksgiving, so I'm going to go and spend some time and do some things, relax a little bit, and then I will come back maybe tomorrow with my episode two reaction of all the Queen's Men, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.